Wow, if that doesn't get you excited about NASA and the future of exploration, I don't think anything will. Hello everyone and welcome to NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center located in Alabama's Rocket City. I'm Todd May, the Center Director of Marshall Space Flight Center and on behalf of our team, I thank you for being here today. Whether you're here in person or watching online, it's an honor to host this year's State of the NASA Address right here in front of one of uh, Marshall's facilities where we're applying uh, insulation to flight hardware here today. This building is our national center for advanced manufacturing. Down the hall, we do amazing advanced manufacturing, 3D printing, and technologies for new composite materials and processes, or as we like to call it, Willy Wonka's Rocket Factory. This is a great opportunity to highlight some of the amazing things we're doing right here at Marshall Space Flight Center and around the agency. From building and testing America's next generation rocket, the Space Launch System, to advancing science here on Earth, on the ISS and beyond, Marshall continues to play a vital role in America's space program. Now I'd like to show you a short video that offers imagery of SLS hardware coming together all over the country the fascinating technology work we do here at Marshall and that we deliver for the nation and the support we provide to the International Space Station 24-7. It's just a glimpse into what we do each and every day here at Marshall and around the country. Here at Marshall Space Flight Center, we make human space exploration possible. Fish. 
pretty amazing what our comms folks can do with uh, video. I wish they could take about 20 pounds off of me. <laughs> Thank goodness I'm not afraid of heights either. Hey, I hope that clip got you excited about the work we're doing here today and the plans we have for the future and the promise of tomorrow. I've been a part of Marshall Space Flight Center for a long time now, and the sense of awe for our mission and, and the greater purpose behind it, it, it really never goes away. That's one of the fringe benefits of working in our business. Um, we get really excited about the work we do, and the sense of mission uh, is what gets us up very early uh, every day. And the man I'm about to introduce to you is no stranger to Marshall Space Flight Center either. I could, uh, I could give you a long uh, bio of him, some of which, actually none of which he'd want me to tell you, some of it because we knew him way back when, but uh, the rest of it because he has that true gift of, of, of humility. Um, and if you don't know who he is, there's a portrait of him hanging over at Morris Auditorium. So I want to I wanna just uh, say thanks again for being here today. Welcome to Rocket uh, City. And uh, without further ado, I want to bring up Robert Lightfoot, our acting administrator. Um, he is an amazing person that has been leading our agency now uh, since the departure of his predecessor, uh, Charlie Bolden. Robert. Thank, thank you, Todd. I appreciate the, uh, the introduction. It's always good to be back here at Marshall. Um, I really appreciate your leadership of uh, my center uh, um, and the continued engagement by you and really all the senior, senior leaders at, at, in the agency that are out there watching today. Um, you know, it's been a joy as the acting administrator having such a great senior leadership team around me to say, help, me, help me run this place. It's a great agency to run. I have to admit that this is almost uh, like old home day for me. You know, I, this weekend I saw my kids. This was my third kid. Uh, this, this is engine 3001. Um, I, I feel like I birthed this baby back in uh, the, the uh, late 80s, early 90s with Larry Leopard and a few people here from Marshall um, that we went out and followed this engine and it became a, a great test bed for us here at Marshall and, and a lot of us here cut our teeth testing this engine. So it's kind of cool to see it back and see the art, see it see the whole shuttle main engine program being morphed into an RS-25 and I'll talk about the advantages that gives us going forward. You know, everybody here in the room and those of you tuned in around the agency, I thank you for being here today and listening in. I, I, I remain truly amazed at what we do as an agency and what everyone can accomplish. Uh, it's simply humbling to lead this team and, and really lead the place that's the best place to work for in government for the last six years. That's pretty awesome, you guys. It's all because of you, not because of us at the leadership position, so it's fantastic. So today I get to roll out the president's budget and I'm pleased to present the highlights of the 2019 budget for NASA. Let's just hit, the, hit it up front, bottom line up front. The budget request this year is uh, for, for, for FY 2019 is $19.9 billion. So $400 million increase in terms of what we've, been, what we've had uh, that we're working to right now as an agency. It really reflects the administration's confidence that America will lead the way back to the moon um, and take that next giant leap from where we made the first small step for humanity some 50 years ago. So it's a pretty exciting time for us and I think it really represents a lot of goodness that we can do. The budget focuses NASA on its core exploration mission. It reinforces the many ways that we return value to the American taxpayer through knowledge and discoveries, strengthening our economy and security, and deepening partnerships with other nations, providing solutions to tough problems, and inspiring that next generation to take over from us one day when we're all done. The budget places NASA and the United States once again at the forefront of leading a global effort to advance humanity's future in space and draws on our nation's great industrial base and capacity for innovation and exploration to raise the bar for human potential and improve life across the globe. The, pro the proposal this year provides a renewed focus to our human spaceflight activities and really tries to expand our commercial and international partnerships and continues that pursuit that we've always had of cutting edge science and aeronautics, the breakthroughs that we need that are at the core of our very mission as an agency. In addition to providing continuity in, in most of our mission areas, there are really three distinct areas in the exploration area that we're gonna talk about, mostly around the lunar exploration program that we're trying to do, 
what we're going to try to do with low Earth orbit, and then the research and technology area as we move forward. But before I go into the details of that, I really want to share with you how we got to this point. Because it's been kind of a labor of love for the past couple of years for a lot of us in the leadership position. And I, and I want to explain how those exploration efforts have been embraced by the administration and the work that the team's done to get us there. So if you'll bear with me, I'm going to kind of get you there. So this, as always, these budgets are a culmination of a lot of work over roughly the past two years um, by, the, by the whole NASA team, really kind of, kind of trying to establish what are those key roles that NASA plays, you know, not only in government but in the world. You know, we get to this point by a lot of work, by a lot of folks, and, and I got to tell you, I want to thank Andrew Hunter and the CFO and RMO team in the agency for the tremendous effort they've had this year on this complex budget. Andrew's been acting just as long as I have. Uh, and I can tell you, he's been doing a whole lot more than acting. Uh, he's been doing a great job leading this team and leading the, the, the organization to get the budget built. So thank you, Andrew, um, for all the work you've done to do that. But how do we get to this point? How do we get to a point where we get a budget that, that is so positive here? If you go back before the, before the election, we spent roughly a year as a senior team really trying to work on the transition to a new administration, asking those fundamental questions. You know, why do you have a NASA? What does the N in NASA stand for, that national? What does it mean to be national? We looked at law, we looked at policy, we looked at history, we, we bannered back and forth, and we really came down that our enduring purpose as an agency is to discover, explore, and develop. And we kind of built off those tenets and, and created a whole new set of tenets that we shared with the new administration. And I think you'll see these tenets are kind of woven throughout everything I talk about when I get to the budget pieces of this. Those tenets are simple. They're maintaining and expanding U.S. global leadership in space and aeronautics to support national interest, support the industrial base, but also as a global arm of diplomacy and influence across the world. We also expand human knowledge through new scientific discoveries. We do that all the time. I mean, just look. Every, every week we have something else coming out in that arena. We're extending continuous U.S. presence deeper into space. We're addressing the societal challenges that this nation faces, and we're trying to catalyze economic growth. And my favorite one is we inspire a nation. We inspire a nation with what we can do, not dwelling on what we can't do. We use those tenets, working with the administration, to shape NASA's important thread in the fabric of this nation. The next big step in this process was when the reestablishment of the National Space Council chaired by Vice President Mike Pence. I've been so impressed with, with Vice President Pence's engagement in what we're doing as an agency. I've had the opportunity to talk to him several times, and he truly, truly is inspired by what you guys do every day and wants us to do more. And so it's exciting to be around him and, and talk to him about this. In the first, first meeting of the council in, in over 25 years, I was assigned an action given 45 days to develop a nationally focused study to have NASA lead an innovative and sustainable campaign of exploration that will lead the return of humans to the moon for long-term exploration and use, followed by human missions to Mars and other destinations. This study would become the backbone of our exploration campaign that's called out in the, National, uh, the President's Space Policy Directive 1, signed by President Trump, and then codified, I believe, in this budget, this 2019 budget. While the directive created a, a renewed focus on return to the moon, we had to address a lot of familiar issues that we've had to address for the past few years. As most of you know, we've used the International Space Station as our jumping off point or the cornerstone for pushing human presence further into space, with a horizon goal always of humans to Mars. This includes learning about human physiology of space flight, demonstrating new technologies for systems that we need for further transportation, and enabling a new industry of set of partners to bring to bear their capabilities and actually emerge as leaders in their own right to help us on this journey. You may also remember we've been saying that we needed to establish a presence in the area around the moon to prepare for such a journey. This became our central focus for planning as we talked about what are we going to do in the decade of the 2020s around the moon. In many ways, the work of the decade of the 2020s is in, in the area around the moon, it really just needed clearer goals and objectives. We also needed to look at how we're, how we're going to do this with a good balance of NASA, the U.S. industry, and our international partners going forward. The administration's direction ties to the growing recognition of the strategic and economic opportunities that the expansion beyond low Earth orbit represents. In short, we're once again on a path to return to the moon 
with an eye toward Mars. This time, though, we're leveraging the multiple partners we have both here at home and internationally in developing a, um, a sustainable approach where the moon is simply one step on our truly ambitious and long-term journey to reach out further into the solar system and to reap the economic, the societal, and the expanding knowledge benefits of such an endeavor. That's where the 45-day study and the action that we got from the National Space Council provided us with a platform to clarify and coordinate our plans for exploration at the moon and with the administration. I believe you'll see the clarification of those objectives in the details as I lay them out. I must add here one thing that, that has been very important to me as the acting administrator. I've had such seamless alignment across technology, human exploration, science, aeronautics and our mission support group. You, you look at, you can't, you can't get a gap between Steve Jerzyk, Bill Gerstenmaier, Thomas Zuberkin, Jaywan Shin and Dan Tenney. They have been so synced up. Tom Crimmins has been pulling them together and their leadership and commitment to develop a very integrated set of mission objectives has been impressive. I happen to chair the agency executive council where a lot of the decisions get made that we submit and I've got really four great partners there. Andrew Hunter, of course, is the CFO. Um, Gail Allen, who's our chief scientist. Douglas Terrier, the chief technologist. And of course, my deputy, Krista Paquin. And we've been so blessed to have the, the team of the mission directors come in seamlessly with these, with these proposals and plans. So it's been exciting uh, to see how folks can come together and how we really are working as one NASA as we go forward. So. So with that background and that backdrop of how we got there, let's dive into the details a little bit. I'm going to start at exploration, um, and I'll get to science and aeronautics as we go through this in mission support. Um, the direction and the priority was clear, re to, to refocus existing NASA activities toward exploration by redirecting funding to innovative new programs and support for new public-private initiatives. So let's talk about that. In exploration of the 19.9 billion that we we're proposing as an agency in 19, 10.5 is, is going into that, into that area. And there's really three focus areas that we're working on. It's really the, the lunar and deep space, the low earth orbit commercialization, and then exploration research and technology. So I'm gonna start with the lunar part and share with you what's going on there. So first of all, the Space Launch System and Orion spacecraft are critical backbone elements of that future in deep space, whether it's lunar and beyond. Their momentum continues this year as the as this budget supports the current planning for the uncrewed and the crewed missions that we need to get crewed around the moon. The SLS core stage hardware, as Todd mentioned, is completing manufacturing and preparing to be structurally tested here at Marshall. The large test facilities out where I used to work in my earlier days, they kind of dot the horizon now when you come in. It's a little different when you drive into the center and you see them out there and the teams are ready to go. We've already started some of that structural testing with the engine section already here, and the tests are going well. Uh, Orion, led by the team at Johnson Space Center, continues its great progress across the country. Uh, the, the main capsule at Kennedy Space Center is really just hitting their stride with the amount of testing they're doing as well, uh, getting the systems ready all over, this, all over this great nation. The team at Stennis is preparing for the integrated test of the SLS with the RS-25s. Um, that's going to be quite a test. Uh, that we get to see uh, here soon. And then the ground systems team at Kennedy is preparing to receive all this hardware uh, while preparing the mobile launcher, the VAB, and the software we need to, to launch this vehicle as we go forward. So it's a pretty exciting time. Um, you just have to go to any of the centers, and as Todd says, people are pretty jazzed up about what they're doing and getting to do to get us ready to go fly this. And I think we've got the most development going on since, we had, since before the first space shuttle flight. It's that kind of intensity. And this upcoming year is going to be all about testing for that. And, and the, the 19 budget supports all that. Also in the moon, we're, around the moon, we're going to have, in orbit, we're going to, we're going to place and begin a, the first steps of our in-space infrastructure. Um, and, and in that development, we're going to, we're going to launch a, the power and propulsion element for the, for the lunar orbiting platform gateway that we're going to put up. That's planned to launch in 2022, and that'll be the first piece that we're going to have around the moon. Also at the moon, we're going to have a series of, of more capable landers. We're going to start with small ones to basically be our scouts, do the resource prospecting, as I call it, to get ready to go and, and learn what we can from a scientific perspective, but also how it applies to humans. So you'll see a, a, a series of landers 
going forward um, in, this, in this budget that allows us to really start getting our feet wet with what it's like to be on Mars. I'm on the moon, sorry. Uh, this will give us a strategic presence in that lunar vicinity, and it will drive our activity with the commercial and international partners and help us further explore that moon and its resources and translate that experience toward human missions to Mars. You know, we're seeing an expanding set of investments and capabilities that can complement and that we can leverage um, to build greater opportunities with, with, our, with our commercial partners and our industry, U.S. industry partners. None, you, you have to look no further than last week's uh, Falcon Heavy launch, an incredible accomplishments for our partners at SpaceX for what they did, just an amazing thing. And I don't, I don't care who you are, that was a pretty cool, pretty cool thing to watch and pretty exciting for all of us from, uh, that, that are in this business. We know how hard it is to get to that first launch, and I congratulate the SpaceX team for what, what they did and what they accomplished. I still think those two landings at the same time, I told Elon, I said, that looks like Hollywood, man. I'm not sure it really happened. <laughs> but my friends at the Cape said it did. So pretty impressive and, uh, in, in terms of what they did. But we get to start leveraging that capability as we, as we build our own capabilities. So that's kind of the area around, around the moon and where we're heading, headed for on and around the moon. The next area we're talking about is low Earth orbit. Um, that's, a, that's a focus area for us going forward. And, and while we head to the moon and ultimately to Mars, we need to be able to look back into low Earth orbit and see a vibrant economy, an economy that we've created and we've spurred with things like the International Space Station and how we've used the International Space Station to do that. As such, this budget proposes to stimulate commercial industry opportunities in low Earth orbit providing an off-ramp for government-led operations at the International Space Station. So what we'll do is we'll ramp up efforts to transition uh, low Earth orbit activities to the commercial sector and to indirect federal government support of the ISS in 2025. Hopefully to begin relying on commercial partners for our, Earth, for our low Earth orbit research and technology and demonstration requirements. To that end, this budget proposes $150 million in 2019 to encourage the U.S. space industry to develop the capabilities and bring all those capabilities to bear in low Earth orbit, either at the ISS or on standalone platforms that both private sector and NASA can use. This budget also continues to support for the commercial crew and cargo programs, with both, prov with both providers and crew providing continued pro continue to make great progress toward launching astronauts from the U.S. This is a critical part of our low Earth orbit strategy and something we've been wanting to have occur for a long time. On the cargo side, we, we've just awarded um, Sierra Nevada their first cargo mission. So we continue to engage other commercial folks as well in this process. So that's in this budget. And finally, in the budget for the low Earth orbit and, this, and kind of the support to commercialization, we have a, the budget is, supports space communications, propulsion test, and launch services. These are all critical part of kind of our, what I call our infrastructure and the things that are necessary to do any kind of work in space these days. The next piece is the, of, the, of the exploration strategy is around technology. Um, in this area, all the agency technology efforts, whether they were in advanced exploration systems or in space, tech mission, space technology mission directors, are going to be combined and refocused, refocused toward the exploration campaign. The healthy budget line here of almost just over a billion dollars um, will, will, is proposed for what we're calling now exploration research and technology, and it integrates space technology and the technology efforts for uh, uh, AES. Our investments in technologies lay that groundwork that we need for future human and robotic missions. We're going to invest in a lot of things from habitat systems to in-space propulsion to entry, descent, and landing, the things, the technologies we're going to need to continue to press humans forward, but the technologies will be focused around exploration. As such, we're also going to realign the organizational structure to, to best meet this new exploration focus. I've asked Steve Jerzyk the current head of Space Technology Mission Director, to lead an effort to design a new organizational approach. Today we're looking at two options, uh, a single mission directorate that includes the, the LEO commercial activity I talked about, the deep space exploration I talked about, and this exploration research and technology. The other option is the LEO commercial is by itself, and the other two are together as a mission directorate. So we're going to be working through that over the next few months to see what the best option is going forward. And there's even hybrids from that, as you might, can imagine. So, so Steve will be leading that to me and reporting back to me um, as, as we go forward. So overall, from an exploration perspective, a very exciting budget, $10.5 billion, and a lot we can do as an agency. I'm very excited about that. So now let's move on to science. Um, you know, the, the science, our, our critical portfolio in science, and the budget proposed this year is, is roughly $5.9 billion. 
the incredible science portfolio, we continue, will continue to increase our understanding of our planet, our place in the universe, pursue those civilization level discoveries that our science team does so often, such as whether or not there's life elsewhere in the planet or out in the universe, and scout for knowledge to inform future human advancement in space. Mars rovers, sample return missions, diverse Earth and planetary missions, and spacecraft to study the sun and how it influences the very nature of space are things we'll learn about. Our wide-ranging wide -ranging science work is enabled on many fronts in this budget, and it will continue to lead the world in its size, scope, and scientific output. Robotic exploration of the solar system continues strongly with funding in this budget of the next Mars rover to launch in 2020. Sorry, Mars 2020 is in here. Funding to explore the possibility of returning samples from Mars, the next piece we want to do from a Mars standpoint and the Europa Clipper mission to fly repeatedly by Jupiter's icy moon of Europa is included in this budget. We'll support a focused Earth science program while we propose terminating the same missions we proposed terminating last year as we go forward. But the budget there is the same as it was before. As stated earlier, science mission director will actually lead the initial lunar exploration landers. The landers I talked about in the exploration program, the budget proposes $200 million in 2019 to jumpstart those small landers and the intermediate landers as we get going, to be, really be our scouts, followed in, long, in, in sometime by larger landers that can be, begin lunar surface mobility and actually sample return of lunar resources soon thereafter, potentially through the lunar orbiting gateway platform or lunar orbiting platform uh, gateway that we have. This budget also continues to fund the work of our incredible scientists across this country to research and analyze the data coming from our many spacecraft that we have flying today, and to look ahead at the next missions that we need to accomplish to meet the, the many science objectives we have in front of us. We did have to make some hard, hard decisions in science, though, and this budget proposes canceling our w First mission and taking those resources and redirecting them to other agency priorities. In aeronautics, NASA has always strengthened our national security and the economy with our ongoing research and testing of new aeronautics technologies, and is critical in these areas for what we do. I think the budget this year will help us lead the world in global aviation economy with increased benefits worldwide. The budget maintains a robust, robust investment of six, roughly $634 million to improve air traffic management, make progress integrating unmanned systems into the airspace, and to fund our experimental supersonic airplane, the low boom flight demonstrator, and increase hypersonic research as an agency. So another exciting profile for aeronautics. In education, another hard choice we had to make was in education. The, the budget redirects funding for a formal education office to other priorities. However, through our amazing missions that we do, we will maintain a high level of engagement to inspire the next generation to pursue STEM studies and join us on our journey of discovery for many years to come. I want to thank Mike Kincaid and Chris Brown, who've led the effort for this budget process in the education office across the whole education team and the agency for their efforts. So let's talk about the, the institutional part, the safety, security, and, and mission services, and this, the, the environmental remediation and construction budget we have. This budget funds us to, to continue the ongoing operations for restoring NASA centers, ensures core services are optimized to achieve a safe uh, and healthy workplace and maintains funding for the independent technical authorities that obviously provide us risk reduction as we move forward um, with all our missions. It also strengthens our cybersecurity capabilities uh, by safeguarding critical data and systems, an area we all have to pay a close, close attention to. The funding level there is roughly $2.75 billion, um, and, and our efforts that we've had in the past to reform and optimize the agency mission support services will continue to be critical for the long-term health of our center capabilities. It's essential that we continue to make progress in reducing our facility footprints um, with the goal of replacing old and obsolete costly facilities with few more efficient facilities. Marshall's done a great job with that. If you look at the construction of the buildings around there, and I can tell you, you see a return on that investment every time we put a new facility anywhere in this agency. It's, it's the right thing to do. I applaud the work of the center and agency facility master planners who really have embraced this vision um, and developed aggressive and innovative and strategically aligned master plans. I want to thank all of you as well that have been contributing to the business service assessments and more recently to Janet Petro's activity in mission support architecture 
program, which is looking at all our mission support functions to modernize, regionalize, and eliminate duplication, and, and really across the geographic boundaries where possible. Now these, these efforts admittedly are not as exciting as an engine test. They're not as exciting as a discovery from a, from a spacecraft that we have or a launch, but they are really critical to what we're doing as an agency to get more efficient and more effective so we can take those resources and plumb them back right into our, into our missions. In summary, I believe this budget has strong engagement for all of NASA, academia, industry, and our international partners. It is truly the and scenario that I talk about so much, not the or. It's going to take all of us to do that. While we had to make some hard decisions, as we always have to, this 2019 budget sets the stage for an exciting decade of the 2020s where we'll take our next giant leap. To demonstrate, I believe, to demonstrate that, I believe it's useful to look forward to the end of the decade and see what we can accomplish with this budget. So if you'll go with me here a little bit, we're going to fast forward to 2030 and look back. And I believe everything I'm going to say is perfectly possible with this budget. In exploration, we will have crews and a growing number of people from all walks of life working around the moon and on commercial platforms in low Earth orbit. We'll be leveraging our industry partners to provide services to both the lunar vicinity and low Earth orbit. SLS and Orion will be transporting crews routinely to the lunar orbiting platform gateway, and they'll be transiting to and from the lunar surface, preparing for more, even more further deep space exploration. In science, we will have utilized our lunar scouting missions, and prospecting of lunar resources will be well underway. Samples will be collected on Mars, and we'll be well on our way to bringing them back home. We will have determined if we can generate oxygen from the Martian atmosphere in preparation for future, future human missions. We have found countless exoplanets from James Webb Space Telescope and TESS. We will have explored Europa and be well on our way to sending a lander there to probe for possible biological evidence of life elsewhere in our universe. The science from the Polar Sar Parker Solar Probe, say that fast, will have provided the best understanding of our sun ever and how space weather impacts us each day. Our continuous understanding of the Earth has will have evolved thanks to the many satellites and aircraft we have feeding our knowledge and help us managing, manage this incredi incredibly increasingly interconnected home planet. Finally, OSIRIS-REx will have returned its sample from the asteroid Bennu and providing us untold insight into another planetary body. In aeronautics, drones will be fully integrated into the nation's airspace based on the systems developed by NASA researchers for our FAA partners. Urban air mobility will be a common mode of transportation. Yes, you'll have your Jetson car. And a new fleet of supersonic passenger planes will be in the skies. And at NASA as an institution, We'll have a much more integrated and efficient footprint and we'll trans have transformed our operating model to allow reinvestment of resources back into the mission and mission support areas. This is what we can accomplish with this budget. None of this is out of our reach and it's going to take all of us, NASA, academia, industry, our international partners, but we can do this. The administration has provided us that vote of confidence entrusting us with the vision for the nation's growth and future. I want the entire workforce, whether you're out there watching or here in the room, to know that how much your efforts meant to NASA and our ability to actually gain that confidence and where you get to play in all those accomplishments that I just described that are coming. You always come through. We have one mission success after another and keep moving toward the next challenges together. And because of that, I say the state of NASA is strong. In closing, I'll share this. What we do is generational and aspirational. It makes us reach higher than we thought we ever could. It makes us push the limits of our knowledge 
and ignore those sometimes false boundaries between possible and impossible. For all of that, what do we get in return? Simply an opportunity to change the world. How cool is that? You get to do that every day. It's truly an honor to lead this incredible team, and I look forward to accomplishing these amazing missions with you. With the confidence this budget places in NASA and the capabilities of our U.S. industry, we will solidify American leadership in space. Thank you all for your service to NASA and to our nation. Best, best of luck to all of us. Thank you.